Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the technical session on Space Sciences of the annual International Research Conference 2021. The Faculty of Built Environment and Space Sciences, General Sir John Kodarayala Defense University. I would also like to inform you that this session is also being virtually connected with the KDU Southern Campus as well. This technical session will be evaluated by a panel of judges. This session on Special Sciences will be chaired by Dr. H.M.I. Prasanna, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Surveying and Geodesy at the Faculty of Geomatics, Sabarmo University of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give a brief introduction about the seminar academic. Dr. H.M.I. Prasanna is the immediate past dean of the Faculty of Geomatics, Sabarmo University of Sri Lanka. He has obtained his PhD from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong. Prior to serving as the Dean of the Faculty, Dr. Prasanna has served as the Head of the Department of Surveying and Geodesy at the Faculty of Geomatics. His teaching interests span across geodesy and geodetic reference systems for both undergraduates and postgraduate students. Presently, he is serving as a member of International Association of Geodesy and Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. His research focuses on earth gravity field modeling, geodetic reference systems, and datums. His ongoing research includes development of a unified vertical reference framework for land and hydrographic surveying in Sri Lanka. He has published in several peers reviewed and index journals and has presented numerous research papers at national and international conferences. Dear sir, let me have the honor of inviting you to chair this session. Yeah, thank you very much uh, and uh, good morning to you all. First, uh, I would like to uh, thank the uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, Sir uh, John Potalavala Defense University and the Dean of the Faculty of uh, Built Environment and Spatial Sciences uh, of KDU for inviting me to uh, chair this uh, technical session. Actually, I have been uh, the chair of this technical session for a number of times, and uh, it's my pleasure and uh, honor to chair this time as well. So let me welcome all the uh, presenters uh, and the distinguished uh, guest of this uh, 14th International Research Conference of uh, Sir John Kotalavala Defense University under the theme uh, security, stability, and national development in the new normal. Actually, as uh, academics, uh, we have two main responsibilities. Those are teaching and research. Teaching is our fundamental requirement and responsibility. Everybody is doing that. And research is utterly important because that creates new knowledge. So without new knowledge, we cannot move forward. So in that sense, uh, KDV is doing a national requirement. So organizing this kind of a research uh, conference actually provides an opportunity and platform for new researchers, especially new academics, to share their research findings. And to discuss with the colleagues of their research findings. So in that sense, uh, KD is doing a great job here today. And KDU uh, IRC 2021, this time uh, I saw they got four uh, technical papers for this uh, technical session. And while thanking uh, and congratulating all the presenters and wishing them for their research work and future academic life and research life, I would like to start the uh, technical session now. Uh, before that, uh, before starting this session, as a common announcement, I would like to uh, uh, convey all these presenters that uh, according to the schedule, uh, you will have uh, 12 to 14 minutes for your presentation, maximum 14 minutes. Then at the end of all these presentations, we will have a Q&A session. So I hope uh, everybody physically join, all the presenters uh, are physically join this uh, conference. And uh, let me start uh, the technical session now. We got four papers uh, among them. Uh, the first paper 
the topic of the first paper is accuracy analysis for total station based on uh, reflected distance measurement using ANOVA. The authors of this paper are PPR Disanayak and uh, Ms. D.S. Munasing. And the presenting author is uh, Mr. Disanayak. He has graduated uh, from the Faculty of Geomatics, Sambarakum University of Sri Lanka. Uh, with a BSc uh, degree in uh, serving sciences with a specialization in serving and geodesy. So I'd kindly invite uh, Mr. Disanayak to uh, present your paper. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Rajiv Rajit. Uh, my topic is the accuracy analysis for total station based on the reflectless distance measurement using ANOVA, uh, paper ID 41. Uh, my supervisor is Ms. Mona Singh. We are both uh, representing departments of geodesy, faculty of geomatics uh, in Sabra University of Sri Lanka. Uh, let me give a brief introduction in this research. Uh, new technologies uh, become uh, more significant in many ways of serving as in uh, many professions. That kind of technologies engage in the faster data collection with increased uh, speed and accuracy. One such a piece of equipment is a reflectless total station, we also known as the TS. Uh, total station and electronic serving instrument, it combine the electronic geolight and the uh, EDM uh, with the computer. In the electronic theolite, measure the angle of the two-way, vertical angle and the horizontal angle. And the uh, EDM measure the distance by using the laser technology. Uh, reflectless technology you see in the different circumstances uh, in survey infrastructure that is inaccessible and to improve the efficiency, it provides rapid measurement by saving time and efforts for surveys. Uh, it in, uh, increase the personal safety without approaching unserved surfaces. Uh, as you can see in here, the first figure, uh, this is the uh, smooth surface and uh, this is the rough surface. Based on the material on the surface, reflection also varies. So in here, this smooth surface is the uh, perfect reflection, whereas the uh, rough surface has the uh, diffuse reflection. It means the uh, this surface is the uh, smooth. The incident ray and the reflected ray are the same angle and same direction. But in the diffuse reflection, these uh, reflected rays are uh, going to different different rays. So, and additionally, some multiple that may happen with interest and extra error. Uh, as an example, uh, uh, when talking about the uh, bridge construction, so we have to monitor the deformation in here. So, uh, we uh, put the instrument near to the bridge. Uh, so, so may, uh, we have to uh, take uh, some measurement in fears. So some maybe it uh, multipart too close to the bridge. So we have to take some distance from the uh, bridge to in river side to other side. So uh, it's too close. There is a multipart, and also we can't uh, moving uh, this particular physical object. Uh, in traditionally, we use the prism for uh, distance measurement, but in this case, we use the reflectless mode. So we can't move or rotate like uh, this prism. So it may be affected the final calculated distance and the meteorological condition are parameter uh, that influence the EDM uh, for this reason because of the uh, temperature of target surface change. So uh, this temperature changing, there is a effect to the uh, surface. Uh, we are want to measure the distance from the instrument to uh, that particular object. So it may be uh, calculated this errant. Uh, Maybe it's that be everyone. And uh, uh, research problem, uh, as you can see in this uh, first figure, uh, this is the uh, granite material, uh, and this uh, this also granite material, the same one. Uh, this first one is the 20 meter from the instrument, uh, and second one is the 100 meter from the instrument. So you can hear this red dot is the footprint of the signal beam. So in 20 meter, this footprint is the very small one, but in the uh, 100 meter, this footprint is larger than 20 millimeter. So uh, 
when the distance from the total station to the object increase it also increases the width of the signal beam and uncertainty of the incident angle of the material surface rad come obtain uh, perfect reflection i earlier said this example uh, this this construction so is close to the bridge there is the multipath that will happen and incident angle also the effect because of the uh, when uh, reflected is uh, reflected angle is uh, did not reflect the incident angle more than 60 or uh, whatever uh, this also and the uh, meteorological condition were also taken the consideration and the difference of the final accuracy of the work when comparing with the reflector distance concerned in the reflector distance was having variations and the main objective is the Uh, to analyze the accuracy of reflectless total station for Sophia set 530R and Trimble length 3 total station with the distance, uh, based on the main objective, following sub objectives are identified to investigate the effect of the uh, distance measurement for uh, different measurement with the target with the distance for uh, different environmental condition with the target with the distance by changing the incident angle with the target with the distance. Uh, this is my methodology first site selection then field observation for both uh, instrument and first collect the reflector distance measurement then after a reflector less distance measurement for all different materials different incident angles and different condition for both instrument then uh, result the typical and statistical method then compare analysis for result and final conclusion uh, these those are my instrument which i use for this research the yellow one is the trimble entry total station and green one is the sokia set 530r total station Which are available in the, uh, this situation, and this this is the uh, uh, prism which I use the uh, common prism use this both instrument, and this is the very special tri batch which I made uh, for the attach all material in here. Uh, it include the plastic uh, protector in here and the all material clamping in here and uh, rotate the, this tri batch in here. This is steel one. Uh, I use the uh, ten common uh, mostly using the construction field materials. And use two condition dry and wet condition to convert the wet condition. I use the water spray bottle uh, to spray the surface of the material. And distance I use the uh, 10 meter interval up to 100 meter. There are 10 meter intervals. And incident angle I take the uh, zero incident uh, zero degrees and 30 degree. Uh, as example, this is for the Sokia instrument uh, for uh, 10 meter for Jacob material. First, we uh, take the measurement by using prism uh, for this 10 meter distance. Then, we after removing this prism, then attach the uh, special dry batch in here and uh, attach the uh, jacket material in here. First, uh, collect data in incident angle zero with wet condition. There are three measurement and get average value. Then convert to the wet condition. I use the uh, water spray bottle this surface and convert to the wet condition and take the uh, distance. The distance and take the average value, and uh, also uh, incident angle 30 degrees and get dry condition and wet condition. Likewise, change the uh, materials in here and uh, change the instrument and the change the distance. Likewise, I collect the all data in here. Uh, and the result, the result outline for all materials and conditions and uh, all environment condition in here. Uh, this comparison made between the uh, prism target distance and the material. Uh, the different materials. Uh, the for, for the first one, as you can see here, this for the jacket material, uh, uh, and the Sokia instrument. This green line is the dry condition zero incident angle. The red line is the uh, dry condition thirty incident angle. The green one is the wet condition zero incident angle, and purple one is the wet condition thirty incident angle. And y axis shows the. Uh, Difference of the prism distance and uh, this jacket material distance difference in here. This black uh, line is the uh, prism distance. It means zero difference. And you, as you can see in here, this different range show in the 30 incident angle for both condition. It uh, it also uh, about 12 millimeter. Uh, and this is this range for the uh, zero incident angle for both condition. It also uh, About the 12 millimeter difference for jacket material in Sokia instrument, the same is, uh, material for Trimble instru is an instrument. This range is up to uh, more than 20 millimeters. Uh, it's about 22 millimeter likewise. And but in the zero incident angle for both conditions, this uh, range is uh, down to the 8 millimeters only. This for the jacket material. Likewise, we can 
uh, draw the all uh, graph length for the all uh, instrument for all uh, instrument. And for the uh, statically, I use the ANOVA. ANOVA means the analysis of the variance uh, to uh, clarify the factors in the uh, RDM. There is a p value in this ANOVA table, it's called the p value. This p value less than 0 0.05, which means the significant uh, relationship between the dependent variable and independent variable. In here, this uh, dependent variable is the prism distance, and the independent variables are all materials, all condition, and all incident angle. The first table show the uh, dry and wet condition with the incident angle. First one, so uh, Sophia set by 30R instrument, and second table for the timber length tolerance. First one, there's a no significant fee value, but in the second table for timber entry, there's a significant value for the wet condition, zero incident angle is less than 0 0.05. And uh, this table for the Sokia instrument for all materials, there are eight values less than 0 0.05 p values. Only two values more than 0 0.505 is granite and plywood materials. And the conclusion, the ANOVA table was proved eight materials are reflected with good accuracy. Only two p values, only uh, granite and plywood materials only for the Sokia set for 30 r instrument. By considering both the ethically and ANOVA outcomes, Sokia set 530R instrument uh, was drained fluctuation between only 20 millimeter to 23 millimeter only. The effect of the dry and wet condition on the distance measurement found statically equal on instant angle, zero degree for thimble entry total station. Uh, in uh, graphically, it saw the error between five to eight millimeter only for all materials in thimble entry total station. Uh, based on the uh, research, this incident angle did uh, not reflect incident angle of the 60 degree. Uh, in this research area of the research, the, there are some uh, of escape for the further researchers. The few uh, recommendations are, uh, we can use the uh, uh, same material with the different colors uh, for also useful to know. Yeah, we, because we can, as an example, we can use the uh, same tile with the different colors what happened to the uh, different colors on uh, RDM. And the, another one is the we can uh, use the different time interval in the same day, the morning session, evening, and afternoon session. Likewise, we can uh, observation uh, for the same day in different time intervals. And another one for uh, this RDM uh, is uh, depend on the battery capacity because this use the uh, laser beam. So battery capacity is very important in this instrument. So measure the distance. So we can to uh, check uh, the battery capacity, the percentage of the battery capacity with the accuracy of the particular distance measurement. It means there was an effect of the accuracy uh, in the uh, measurement. So those are my reference, which I use for this research. And uh, thank you very much for you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Zanak uh, for your wonderful presentation it's interesting and uh, i think uh, you can have uh, you can ask questions at the q and a session at the end of these presentations so let's move to the uh, next presenter so topic of the second paper is detecting urban expansion trends in valigama urban council using remote sensing and gis the authors of this paper are uh, Ms. K. S. L. S. Hasara, J. P. C. Uh, Singhamansha, and N. V. Vikramitra. The presenting author is uh, Ms. Hasara. So, over to you, Hasara, for your presentation. Yeah, let me be free introduce the the presenting author sasara is a fourth uh, fourth year student undergraduate student of the department of spatial sciences faculty of uh, 
built environment and spatial sciences of the KDU. Yeah, Ms. Sasara can start the presentation. Ms. Hasada, you can start your presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are under the system of Kodinawa Defense University. Good morning, Can you hear me? Ms. Asada, you are not audible to us here. Yeah, can we can hear you now. Yes, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Please start your presentation. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Sandhi Hasara Lianike, final year undergraduate student of Ethiopia 35 in Department of Special Sciences of Kodinawa Defense University, Southern Campus. Today, I am here to represent about urban expansion of Valium Urban Council area as my research work. The slide flash on the screen shows the content of my presentation. First of all, introduction, then study area, objectives of my presentation, research problem, the way of methodology, what are the resources and values for the research results, and finally about discussion and conclusion. Sustainable development of the asset, various areas of society, which during the development, the land cover undergoes various changes. Earth is main nature resource that underlies many development activities. Special characteristics of the earth types of land using and their transformation are tending for the urban planning and sustainable land and land use changes process. Urban special expansion directly reflects the development of urbanization. We can understand the nature as well as advice on special decision making for sustainable urban development through urbanization and analyzing urban expansion process. In today, a series of problems overhanging the sustainable implementation of urbanization considered with the land use, its structure, and environmental protection. Urbanization might, but unfortunately, traditional serving and mapping techniques are expensive and time consuming estimate for urban center, especially in developing countries. As a result, interesting research is increasing directly for mapping and monitoring urban stall using GIS and remote sensing techniques. Remote sensing is a comprehensive detecting technique that applies the detecting instrument, untouches the detecting objective, records the electromagnetic wave characteristic of the objective from long distance, and reveals the characteristics of property and change of object through image analysis. Remote sensing is First, effective and technologically sound, which is increasingly used for the analysis of its urban expansions. And also, GIS provides flexible environment for displaying, storing, and analyzing digital data necessary for change detection. According to this research, I had to select Valigam Urban Council area as my study area. The Valigama Urban Council area has been identified as the urban planning, planning boundary. Valigama City it is located in the southern coastal strip near the 
Dalikum Abbey in Matra Southern Area. Dalikum Urban Council area consists of 13 government Dalari divisions. Dalikum is a one of the major tourism attraction destination in and main commercial center of the Matra district. Problem identification of my search work. In current scenario, one of the main impacts in Sri Lanka is urban sprawling. Therefore, I decided to continue my research regarding the urban expansion. Urban expansion is increasingly year by year in the urban council area. But still, there is no proper method for identifying the urban expansion and without any recognition, it is a problem for future urban developers. Already, this is the case. Case study allow through the three basic objectives. The main objective of this study research finding urban expansion index of uh, Balikama Urban Council area. As for relevant details, finding the increasingly built up area and identify the direct direction of the increasing the urban expansion. Literature review. Throughout the case study, I have to go through the Several literature reviews I had to follow, normalized people and built up index, urban expansion index, accuracy assessment are the topics thoroughly. This slide slash shows the diagram of the methodology in the case study. First of all, I had to collect several satellite images in past few years. Then using relevant shape files of study area, subset the satellite images. Using normalized people and built up index, we extract the built up area in the study area. By the using uh, Google Earth, uh, had to extract the built up areas. Therefore, we need to go through the built up bit through with the Google Earth and to get built up areas as point wise. Generally, we can, we, when collecting these points, location details at least have to collect approximately 100 points. For this study, has to take nearly 100 points details, respective years. After taking both of these relevant details and data, as for the next step, we need to investigate the comparison between the normalized people and built up in the extraction of the built up area and the point data gathered from Google Earth. Then, built up area extraction file convert to the shape file and calculate urban expansion index. In next slides, I will introduce you to what, is, what are the normalized people and built up index and built up area expansion. Normalized people and built up index that's used to extract manufactured built up area. NDBI uses the near infrared and mid infrared bands to emphasize manufactured built up area. Built up areas, building area, balance defects, and mid infrared more than when near, near, near infrared. Water bodies do not reflect the infrared spectrum. For green surfaces, the reflectance of the NIR is higher than the, that the MIR spectrum. Expansion index. That simply it means that it can send in urban expansion index. Basically, it depends on the land area movement intermediate year. Here you can see variation as percentage. If SI rate below than 0.001%, that haven't not changed. Also, if it is expanded slightly, SI rate is 0.001 to 0.1%. If SI rate is 0.1 to 1% that expand a slight middle speed. If SI rate is 1 to 5% that rapid that is rapid expansion and if SI rate higher than 5% that is sharp expansion. In here you can see the main source of data that I use follow this research work. This table shows the type of satellite images and the resolution mentioned by the respective years. The main source data were satellite images which was taken from USGS satellite USGS Earth Explorer study. We can determine four main outcomes: built up area extraction, built up area change, urban expansion rate, urban expansion direction. Those are the built up area change over years. Those are the formats which shows the increasement variation of built up area in the urban council area in past five, 15 years in between 2005 to 2020. Built up area expansion. The map slash on screen shows overall built up area expansion from 2005 to 2020. 
here, light pink color shows built-up area expansion in 2005. Yellow color will represent expanded built-up area in 2010. 2015 will represent orange color. Finally, red color will show 2020 expanded build-up area and rest of all other shows than build-up area. According to this map, it shows direction of the urban expansion. The Valley Urban Council area is northeast along which side of the center. Build-up area change. In here, simply you can define how the variation will happen in several past years. Also, it shows ratio difference in between built-up and non-built-up areas in study area. By looking through that gradually the urban expansion is spread among Balikam Urban Council area. However, the growth of built-up area and its expansion directly affect the bare land in region according to the chart details. Urban expansion index. Here you can see at most important part of the research. When considering overall expansion throughout the Valley Urban Council area, according to the expansion index in 2005 to 2010, the expansion was happened at mid level. The main reason behind was the increasement of development of region after 2004 tsunami disaster. In between 2010 to 2015 time period, we can see the expansion rate follows a midway increment. Due to the end of the civil war in Sri Lanka 2009, there was huge increase in tourism industry. By that development may cause of, for this urban expansion after onwards region. When looking throughout this 2015 to 2020 map, there were no more considerable expansion changes in past five years of time. Activity assessment of normalized different with the index. Actually, in this research work, I was unable to take, take care of the accuracy and try to reach 94% percentage level of with uh, 0.7995 cup option average. This may show the calculate level of, about of the particular study area and its measure. This includes economized the for percentage for of which is observed on the ground and that was labeled on the map. The higher number of leakage errors shows the lower accuracy of the product. Finally, I come to the conclusion of the presentation. Built-up area are considered indicators of urban expansion phenomenon. In this study, based on built-up area, there are four views of NDBI effective to extract the urban expansion of area. Commonly used urban expansion matrix is called urban expansion index that used for measurement quantification of urban scroll and urban expansion phenomenon in urban developed area. Since the improve and opening of Valigam urban territory has expanded rapidly. Sat using satellite and remote sensing technology, we can quickly monitor, track, and analyze the urban expansion. However, this research has studied the urban land expansion and scroll in three regions and the land expansion state of each Brahmanagara mission in Valley Urban Council can be easily seen according to the urban street due to the changes administration division and the treasury of the Valley Urban Council have expanded gradually in every five years. This indicates that the accelerated urbanization process promotes continuous urbanization land use in Valley Urban Council area. Finally, as per the result gaining from the shows that the direction of the urban expansion of the Valley Urban Council area along with the beach site center. Urban expansion authorities can take advantage of these techniques for extracting built up area and analyzing urban stroll for effective city planning and strolling control. Thus, need for create innovative approach and further refine existing methods and techniques in order to take full advantage of diversity from remote sensing and data within urban areas. Those are references of my research work. Thanks for listening and interesting. Thank you very much, Ms. Asara, for your nice presentation. Please stay with us. In the QA session, we can have a discussion. Right?
So let's move to the uh, next presenter now, the third paper. Topic of the paper is uh, the severity uh, classification of the forest fire areas by utilizing remote sensing and GIS, a case study in LL Sri Lanka. The authors of these papers are Ms. Uh, Mr. K. M. Chaturanga, Ms. Uh, K. U. J. Sandamali, and Dr. Yar Uppersinghe. The presenting author is uh, Ms. Uh, Sandamali. I think she's going to present this paper physically. So here's your opportunity, uh, Ms. Sandamali, to uh, show your findings with us. What do you, Sandamali? Thank you, sir. Yeah, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, Sandamali before starting her presentation. Ms. Sandamali currently working as a lecturer probationary in the Department of Spatial Sciences, General Sir John Kotarala Defense University. She has obtained the Bachelor of uh, Science in Survey and Sciences degree with a first class honors from the Faculty of Geomatics at the University of Sri Lanka. And she is currently reading for his master's of science uh, degree in GIS and remote sensing at the University of Sijayadripura. Yeah, Ms. Sandamali, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. I am Sandamali from the Department of Spatial Sciences and here to present our research finding under the title of Severity Classification of the Forest Fired Area by Utilizing Remote Sensing and GIS a case study in Ella Sri Lanka, which was co-authored by myself, Dr. A. Agrupasinya, and Mr. K. M. Chaturanga. Let's move the content of the study. Here is the content and the introduction. The burning of forest areas in Sri Lanka can be considered as one of the foremost issues that should be addressed. According to the definition provided by the disaster information management systems of the country, Forest fire includes wildfires, bushfires, or grass fires. The event includes all open air fires in forest, natural, artificial forest, plains, and etc. Therefore, almost all the fires that occurred inside the forest were considered as forest fires in Sri Lanka. Therefore, under this investigation, we were analyzed forest fire incident that occurred in LA area by utilizing remote sensing and GIS. When we consider causes for the forest fire, basically natural and the man-made, but in Sri Lankan concept, according to the disaster management center, most of the forest fires are occurred due to the man-made influences. Therefore, under this investigation, we use remote sensing satellite images as the basic data source, which give continuous measures of the ground and GIS used as the platform of the analysis in GIS, open source uh, quantum GIS platform was used and the semi-automatic classification plugin, which was dedicated for the image classification was used. And finally, ground to use for the, the other Google Earth. When we move to the study area, the study area is the LA rock region, of rock region the forest fire occurred in 2019. And LA is a small town in the Babuli district and uh, considered as one of the attractive tourist destinations of our country. Let's move to the research problem. We will have a closer look of these two figures here uh, provided by the Disaster Management Center. You can understand uh, the, these first five data reported from 2016 to 2019, more than 600. 100 of the forest fires were occurred during these four years, and more than 5,000 of the hectares were burned due to these forest fires. And actually, when you have a closer look here, you can see in Badali district, more than 300 of the cases were 
reported and more than 2,000 of the areas were burned. Therefore, Badal can be identified as one of the vulnerable areas of the forest fires. And in this case study, we focus on the forest fire occurred in Badal region in L. Therefore, our questions are, what is the location of the forest fire? And to find the extent of the forest fire and severity of the burn. In order to addressing all these research problems, the research objectives were formed. The general objective is to map and quantify the burn area and demarcate the level of the burn severity. In supporting my main objective, these are the specific objectives to identify the burn area by the forest fire, to demarcate the fire area, and to map the level of severity of the fire area. So these are the data that used. Basically, we use Sentinel TV satellite images, which downloaded from the Copernicus Sentinel Scientific Data Hub. Uh, in the Sentinel optical satellite image, which has the capability of uh, 10 meter to 60 meter spatial resolution and 5 day global crazy in the temporal resolution. In here, the incident occurred in 22nd August 2019 to 25th August 2019. Therefore, the pre-image downloaded in 27 June 2019 and the post-image 10 September 2019. And finally, accuracy assessments were done by the data collected through the Google Earth. Here is the complete methodology of the study. Visual identification of the burn area done with the use of Google Earth images. Then I download all the satellite images and perform image pre-processing via semi-automatic classification plugin in QGIS. And for the pre and post images, normalized burn ratio and normalized difference vegetation index were performed. And as a change detection technique, data in BR and data in BVI obtained. And then severity level classification and statistical analysis were performed. And then estimate the burned area and accuracy assess with the Google Earth. And finally, discussion of the all the outcomes. Then we move to the normalized difference vegetation index and normalized burn ratio. Here this image uh, provides you the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, optical satellite images are here a visible portion. So uh, the visible portion near infrared band and red, red band were utilized for the NDVI analysis. And near infrared band, short wave infrared bands were utilized for the normalized burn ratio. And by considering pre image and the post image, data in VR and data in DVI were obtained in this study. Here are the results. Here, the first image is short uh, post and pre NVR images of the study area. And the sec second image, it shows the burn severity classification. In this burn severity classification, these red colors and the light orange colors are represent a burned area, and in red color denote the high severity of the burn. And here, the NDVI classification of the forest fire. And first image, it shows pre and post conditions of the NDVI. And the second image, it shows a threshold value applied pre and post NDVI images of the study area. And uh, the red color area denote the higher area. Then, by considering all outcomes, here is the final result. This table indicates the severity of levels of the burn and area coverage of the each type of severity and the percentage of the coverage. According to this table, 73.82 hectares were burned, including 60% of them were high severity of the burn. And actually, we were able to monitor 87% of the accuracy by using Google Earth accuracy collection. And when you have a closer look of these two graphs, in this, uh, the first graph, profile graphs, it shows the change of the condition at the pre and post in both NBVI and NBR. And also in the correlation analysis, it denotes the change that occurred due to the post, occurred due to the first fire in post and pre conditions. Then we move to the conclusions and recommendations. The freely available satellite images and open source GIS software are vital in such studies. NBR, NDVI, 
uh, essentially uh, caused by a mapping and could be used with the relevant field measurements. And uh, since the optical images provide better analysis and the availability of data, but it, they also encounter with the some of the problems just like the cloud cover. So it, as a future, future direction of this study, so, supposed to analyze with uh, some of the microwave data integration. And uh, when we consider in Sri Lankan context for the forest fires, the major causes are under the influence of the human being. It is better to go with proper awareness programs, policy developments, implementation of new rules and regulations in order to prevent these forest fires. So when we consider in the effect of the forest fires are actually difficult to quantify, it's, that much, it's a very huge level. According to this researcher, it, he shows that even it affects for the climate change. Therefore, we need to take proper prevention measures in order to remove all these forest fires, implementing fire and fuel breaks, introducing fire belts, vegetation implementation, firefighting reservoirs, establishing fire brigades are some of them. We should, it is better to align these prevention measures with the proper awareness to the human being or the policy development in order to prevent such forest fires. So these are the my references. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Tamali, for your wonderful presentation. So let's move to the uh, final presentation today in this technical session. So that is from uh, high entropy area. The topic of the paper is uh, analysis of uh, sediment uh, accumulation and dec uh, decumulation pattern by means of uh, bathymetric surveys, a case study in uh, Beirwala Fishery Harbor. The author of this paper are uh, Mr. P. T. B. M. A. Pabasara, Mr. H. Valikotapitya, and Mr. G. P. Gunasinghe. The presenting author is uh, Mr. Pabasara. He has graduated from the uh, Department of Spatial Sciences, Faculty of uh, Built Environment and Spatial Sciences at the uh, KDU. So uh, please uh, go ahead with your presentation, Mr. Thompson. So can you hear me? We can hear you, please, yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, doctor, for your valuable introduction about myself. And uh, now let's uh, move to the presentation. Uh, today, I am here to present the finding of our research and how we have achieved our research objective, analysis of sediments accumulation and decumulations uh, patterned by means of bathymetric surveys, a case study in uh, Bairwala Fishery Harbor. And this will be the content uh, of today's presentation, starting with the introduction and all the topics related to this research, and finally ending with the conclusion. Moving to the introduction, simply we can say hydrography is one of branch in survey. Also, it depends on the ocean, coastal area, and also inland in also inland water bodies too. For collecting hydrographic data, uh, we can use single beam eco sounder and the multi beam eco sounders too. Both single beam and the multi beam 
send an acoustic signal is emitted by a sensor to the bottom of the seabed and the transit time to arrive of the echo is measured. This figure shows us how the variation of the uh, single beam echo sound and the uh, multi beam echo sound. Uh, single beam uh, only uh, emits uh, single beam and the multi beam emits several hundred of uh, measuring beams. Therefore, according to the requirements, we want to select more suitable instrument. Also, most of ports have used single beam echo sounders for the data collection because it consists as of small areas inside the harbor premises. And these are the some uh, activities which depends on the information about the seabed, nautical charting, maintenance and control of harbor approaches, optimization of dredging operations, and scientific marine research, and so on. In Sri Lanka, there are four types of monsoons period for an year. Those are Northeast monsoon from December to February, first inter monsoon from, from March to April, southwest monsoon from May to September, and second inter monsoon from October to November. Depending on the monsoon characteristics like wind, climate, temperature, and so on, the behavior of ocean is going to change. By changing this ocean environment, sediments traveling along the seabed and accumulate to the harbor premises. Because of that, our problem is raised. Therefore, our problem statement is temporal sand accumulation and decumulation of fisheries harbors have severely affected to harbor operations and that is increases the cost of maintenance. Moving to the significance of the study, the available depth reduced for navigation by siltation process, how they navigate and how they dock their ships and boats inside the harbor premises. Therefore, by using bathymetric data, we can identify in which premises and in which time period sand accumulates. Not only that, we can clearly identify which area should be dredged and which time we should dredge. Therefore, these type of facilities for an example, maintain a constant depth should be fulfilled for the fishery sector. These are the uh, main objectives and the specific objectives and research reactions of this research. Main objective is assessing sand accumulation and decumulation pattern in Beirut fishery harbor by means of existing bathymetric data. Also, the specific objectives are calculating sand volumes inside the harbor premises in Beirwala by means of bathymetric data, identify reasons of sand accumulation and decumulation in Beirwala fishery harbor area, identify sand accumulation and decumulation in the harbor premises based on the monsoon season. These are the uh, literature reviews that I have used for my research. Some of literature reviews are shown in the table below. By going through these type of literatures, they only focus of sediments accumulation, decumulation, transportation along the coastal area only, but they never focus on what happened when the sediments travel inside to the harbor premises. For an example, along the northeast part of Sri Lanka, between Point Pedro to the Potuwil, the longshore sediment transport is higher during northeast monsoon than the southwest monsoon according to longshore transport model for South Indian and Sri Lankan costs. Therefore, these papers were very helpful to identify our research gap. Then moving to the methodology, the study area of research project is focused on variable fishery harbor situated in the Western province cultural district. And this is the way that we have achieved our research objectives. First of all, the data gathering, for that, I have used four different data sets, which was collected on February 2012, September 2013, August 2017, and February 2019. Those data were collected by Ceylon Fishery Harbor Corporation. Afterwards, I have created unique polygon shape file for the harbor basin using RPS software. Then I have created raster images using points and created converse by using that cast images. For the quantitative analysis, initially I have created a reference plane. That reference plane is created at the largest depth of 
all four data sets. Afterwards, I have calculated volumes about that reference plane and calculated monthly sediment transport rates and periods. By analyzing those data, these are the results of our research. Compared with February 2012, we can observe that September 2013 and August 2017 sediments decumulate from the harbor basin. Those data were collected in northeast monsoon season. But we compared February 2012 with February 2019, we can say that sediments decumulate to the harbor bracing. Uh, these data were collected on uh, northeast monsoon season. Then moving to the next slide, it shows us monthly volume rate of sediment transport related to 2019 and 2012. By comparing these two tables, we can say that monthly volume rate of transport is high during 2019 and 2017 with compared to 2012 and 2013. Then moving to the discussion, these are the identified reasons for the results. First one is different monsoon changes around in variable area. During southwest monsoon, the sea around the western part of Sri Lanka is short. The currents and waves happen very frequently. Therefore, during this time, there is no sediments deposition around coastal belt due to the energetic waves and currents. Because of that, all the sediments travel to the offshore area due to the energetic offshore currents. But during northeast monsoon, we can see in period sediments travel from deep sea to the coastal areas with the help of waves and currents. During that time period, sediments can be deposit, sediments can be deposited and accumulate inside the harbor premises. Sediments accumulate from the Vera River straight into the harbor basin. This is the uh, type of drainage river which goes to the Vera River. During southwest monsoon time period, the average rainfall is high in variable area. When the rain falls, the sediments come from the land and most of them move to the offshore due to the energetic offshore currents. Therefore, during this time, there is no sediments deposition inside the harbor provinces. I will point out uh, my scenario using this image. Uh, assume this is a Beruvala fishery harbor. In Beruvala, uh, Bear River directly connects to the uh, connects to the uh, directly connects to the Bearwala Fishery Harbor. In this case, all the sediments which comes from the land side due to the rainfall and accumulates, but most of them moves to the offshore due to the energetic cross shore currents during southwest monsoon period. Also, the large amount of sediments accumulate inside the harbor premises during 2019 February and let us be comparing these four data sets. When moving to the conclusion, the purpose of this research is to analyze sand accumulation and decumulations patterned by means of bathymetric surveys. During northeast monsoon, sediments accumulated inside the Bayola Fishery Harbor. Also, during southwest monsoon, sediments decumulate from the harbor basin. By using this type of observations, fishery harbors can fulfill maintenance and the dredging operation for their fisheries sector without any difficulties. And this is the overall conclusion for our research that I have presented today. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to the Faculty of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences, FBSS, and Southern Campus of Kotalawala Defense University, their guidance and the motivation provided for the success of this research, and thanking each and every individual who has contributed to make this research success. And this is the uh, end of my presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Papasara, for your <coughs> nice presentation. Now all four presentations uh, are completed, so we can move to the discussion section now. So, uh, roughly we have uh, around 20 to 25 minutes for this uh, discussion. So you can uh, raise uh, questions uh, uh, from these presenters now. Uh, 
Hi, good morning. Uh, uh, yeah, good morning. Have, yeah, I have a couple of questions. We're starting from the first uh, uh, presenter. Just two questions. One is about the size select. Uh, I would like to ask the factors that uh, inspired you to pick up the particular site under study. Yeah, Mr. Disanayaka, can you uh, clarify that question? Yeah, uh, the factors... Who is the presenter uh, of the first presentation? Uh, yeah. What about factors that uh, what do, do you mean? Well, uh, the site selection criteria has not been uh, mentioned. Uh, I would like to get myself clarified as to what uh, factors that inspired you to select this particular yeah. site. Understood. Thank you for the description. Actually, uh, first we have to, uh, I take the site selection is the perfectly uh, horizontal line because we have to, uh, we can't do the with the undulation of the surface uh, because of the, we do it the horizontal line because the, we have to maintain the incident angle and the change the incident angle. So uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the TS, we have the uh, vertical plane. So in the vertical plane, in, uh, we take this vertical plane in 90 degrees. So we want to the flat area. So uh, I use the uh, uh, pretty much flat area near to the university, uh, more than 100 meters uh, uh, from the instrument to the other all objectors. Well, uh... The whole analysis, I can see you went by 5% confidence interval. Then yeah. uh, uh, actually, uh, why did you try for 1% confidence level? The results would have been quite different. We don't know till you do that. Yeah, uh, because I use the uh, ANOVA. So uh, the, before I use the ANOVA, I use uh, check uh, whether the to apply you or not for ANOVA. So I use, uh, first I use the correlation, uh, check whether there is a uh, no correlation between these all materials. So all materials, uh, the correlation is uh, good because it's all p values less than 0 0.05. So then uh, we can apply the uh, ANOVA because there's a relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable, all materials. So uh, I use the 95 because of the, uh, the p value is uh, 0 0.05 uh, is the uh, significant interval uh, independent variable and dependent variables. Uh, okay, I got, I got the point. Yeah, shall you go to the next presenter or shall you go to the next panel member, please? Uh, uh, yes, actually, uh, Professor. Before moving to the next presenter, uh, yeah. I have also uh, one question from the same presenter. Shall I ask it? You know, before you move yeah, to yeah. the next. That's yeah, right. uh, this is Anaika. It's interesting. Uh, the presentation that maybe would be very useful for the construction serving applications. You, uh, you studied, you know, the inclined angle of this uh, reflecting surface. Just a general question: How did you measure the inclined angle, incidence uh, angle? Uh, yeah, I use the special tri batch. Uh, I really said uh, this special tri batch include the uh, plastic protector. Uh, normally, we traditionally use plastic protector. Uh, then, using this plastic protector, we can uh, measure the incident angle. Uh, the zero means the, uh, the incident angle is the ninth degree. And the uh, 30 minutes the, uh, is rotated to the 60 degree. Likewise, uh, we can change the incident angle of the material by using the special tri batch. Uh, this special tri batch can uh, can be rotated by using this uh, plastic protector. This plastic protector center and the uh, uh, target center are all are the same uh, axis. Yeah, that's fine. Uh... You know, the, usually the, the, the rays are, you know, coming vertical, then the laser spot will be circle, you know. When the, the rays are yeah. inclined, then it gets elliptical shape. So that's normal indication of this inclined angle. And uh, one more question, uh, uh, because uh, the reflectivity is highly depend on color as well, I feel. Because the white reflector surface have... Uh, very strong reflectivity than any other surface. Have you studied, you know, whether there is any impact of the color of the surface? Yeah, I use it uh, in different materials. 
So uh, ten different materials have uh, ten different colors. The as a norm, and but the also the surface uh, variation effect uh, on not only the colors. Uh, this color sheet, yeah, actually color sheets are uh, white is the perfect reflection happen because the white uh, product sheet are the uh, we assume this is the. Uh, more than uh, accurate than the uh, prism, like, uh, not uh, more than uh, same accurate uh, accuracy in the uh, prism target. Uh, I, I only study for the uh, different materials. So further research, I said the recommendation for uh, same material, the different colors. We can check the answer with the uh, relationship between the uh, these uh, same colors. Uh, sorry, uh, different colors. Yeah. Uh, please study that uh, because that is the impact, uh, you know, the of the color as well. So uh, that's all from my side. So over to you, Professor. You can move to the next person. I think uh, we have two other panel members so that we can uh, cover up uh, the, the the presenters in one go. I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you have any questions from the first presenter? Any anyone no, from the audience? I don't. No, yeah, I don't. I don't have. I also don't. No issue. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, the next person, Ashara. Uh, she again did a very good uh, study. I can think of yes, it's very beneficial. Well, uh, Ashara, did you come across any methodical limitations in your study, such as, for example, uh, you know, you have been uh, using a lot of indexes and indexes uh, uh, having their own inherent limitations and parameters, wouldn't that uh, hamper the uh, analysis part? Or did you cite them clearly uh, as to limitations under your study? Based on the only based on the visual data frame data and non data area. Uh, not consider about the, the uh, population growth and other infrastructures only based on the Vidlak and Nandipat area because urban expansion index uh, pressure from the urban expansion index, urban expansion index based on the movement of uh, land area in intermediate years of Vidlak and Nandipat area. Well, uh, regarding uh, the outcome, how can you say this is generalizable? Uh, because your study hall to this valigam area. But if I say most of the same thing would be seen in other areas as well, because most of the areas in the country have been now rapidly urbanized. Okay, so uh, how can you uh, generalize your outcome? To what extent you can do that? Have you thought about it? Uh, actually, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, the, the Develop area can consider Kandy, Gaul, Colombo, and other few urban areas. So, in my opinion, I think this development should go to very different countries. So, according to the, my output, uh, an expansion in this, considering uh, can we find out the, what are the factors of uh, expansion in? some GND division. So consider well, that factors and can we apply the other GND divisions and can we apply them, uh, can we expand other GND divisions as others? Okay, I'm not the subject expert, but the thing is uh, you have been heavily depending upon the satellite images taken from time to time. So that, that would be the one of the methodical limitations in your whole study because uh, satellite images are not, as far as I know, a dynamic kind of uh, output that you can constantly uh, touch upon or depend upon. Okay. Do you agree with me or how do you account for that? I can't, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. okay, just a piece of opinion. Uh, my uh, lay, <laughs> lay view on this. Uh, issue of uh, using satellite images in any study would definitely, you know, uh, have some limitations as far as I know. I don't know. Okay. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And also because dimensional uh, survey methods, mm. can we 
analyze that because this uh, analysis based on the time series analysis and mm -hmm. need to pass years of field experience. So this is the best method. Can't be uh, conventional survey method that calculate this urban area. Fine, fine. Thank you. I can move on to Sandamal if you permit me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have uh, also okay. one question. Uh, this uh, extension of your question as well. Actually, uh, you actually you talk about uh, the professor talk about uh, the accuracy assessment because you have done the uh, the research, but uh, the field verification is very important. This kind of a research, because according to your results, uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the it shows that uh, you you mentioned that it shows that uh, the direction of the urban expansion of the Valigama urban area uh, is actually a uh, uh, along the beach side to the city center, is that true or not? Yeah, that that what you know uh, what I feel uh, you know once you when I uh, see your results. But uh, you know phys uh, as physical evidence, we know that uh, the Valigam area has developed uh, along the main road, along the main road. That's why uh, the professor also asked uh, you know because you your research depend on the highly the majors and the field verification is uh, very much uh, or the accuracy assessment is very much important. How did you do the accuracy assessment of this research? By, by using Google Earth. Basically, you you know field field verification or or just you know randomly sir, arbitrary sir, selected sir. points. Oh, sir. Google Earth data. Sorry. By using Google. Earth. By using yeah, Google. Google data, but uh, have you collected any, any field samples or field data? Have you verified yes, your yes, results sir. with the field data? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, any questions from the judge panel from this uh, presentation? Do you have any questions? Judge no, panel no or the audience? No questions. We have one question. Uh, I'm Dr. Lakmal. Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Lakmal, yes, please. To Ms. Hasara. Ms. Hasara, now uh, you, are, you are talking about the uh, urban, urban uh, side of uh, that accuracy assessment data is always uh, goes, goes along what the uh, session chair has indicated. So uh, my question is, uh, now we are uh, doing all the research work based on a pixel-based uh, analysis work. So uh, for the urban urbanized area, uh, the accuracy might be changed the size of a pixel. So that spatial resolution means always matters when we are de determining the satellite imageries and uh, its uh, work. So what is your proposal? Oh, do you think any kind of a special analysis called uh, sub-pixel classification? Is there any possibility of incorporating sub-pixel classifications? That means going further beyond the pixel level? Yes, sir. Uh, I used uh, uh, Landsat images. That's a 30 meter res resolution that we have. Uh, in this analysis, consider about the whole uh, urban area. So it doesn't matter in this, in this, uh, in this research. Uh, 30 meter resolution, but can be developed as this research uh, get using uh, centennial images that have 30 meter, 10 meter resolution. So, can you hear me? So, can you hear me? Uh, uh, disturbed the voice. But it's okay. I think that uh, you have across the question. Okay, please go ahead, uh, Dr. Indika. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we can move to the next present. Uh, that's the third presentation. Uh, that's about uh, the salinity uh, classification uh, of forest fire areas done by the uh, Miss uh, Sandamali. Sandamali. Okay, Sandamali, uh, uh, I have just one question. Have you got any similar research uh, done in the local context? Because uh, your area is L, uh, but uh, there could be similar outcomes. And how did you uh, get the benefit out of this uh, previous research? Uh, 
Uh, yes, sir. actually, uh, in Sri Lankan context, uh, some of the researches were done uh, same kind of case studies. And uh, recently, in 2015, there was a research. And, and that research, uh, at the research paper, in journal paper, they have mentioned that they, they couldn't identify very good outcome uh, in their outcome, uh, in their analysis, since they use the same. But the problem with that is, uh, as I see, I see uh, the temporal resolution that they use. Because uh, in here, I analyze case by case. For the L area, I analyze for the L region and the, for the identification of the uh, L area. Mm. But uh, in previous research, uh, they consider entire area and uh, the available satellite images they take. So, but in here, the difference is here I use the change detection. Just consider the particular forest fire and analyze that. Not for the considering entire area and or the available satellite images. Okay, so thank you, Sadhvali. Thank you. Thank you. I got the point. So, a new knowledge added along with this study, I believe. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, I I, have, I want to also one clarification from Sandamali. Uh, when I you know went through your uh, paper, uh, I mean I I feel that uh, one of the objective uh, that you supposed to achieve that means to quantify uh, the correlation between these uh, factors. I mean the NDI, MBR, and the the delta factors of these two. Uh, have you achieved that objective? That the correlation between these factors. I mean that NDI. In BR. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, yes, I did that. And I also added that to the paper also. And when we're considering N NBR and NDVI, they have highest correlation in between both these factors. Highest positive. I didn't see that, you know, in the paper, that's why I asked it. Yes, sir. Anyway, uh, can you briefly explain, you know, the, for, the, uh, for those who are, you know, uh, seeing this presentation? be useful uh, how do you apply the same methodology that you mentioned for the unknown forest areas can you briefly explain that you know just explain me sorry sir i couldn't get the point you know i am that uh, can you briefly you know say that how do you apply the same methodology for the unknown forest areas i mean that there is no clue of the forest areas because you know that the, the l area is a forest area a unknown areas, how do you apply this methodology? You got my point? Or? Uh, yes, I think, uh, as I understood, uh, yes, we can apply this method, but it is better to have good field verifications in order to assess the accuracy. Since uh, the remote sensing output is not always correct due to some of the errors, so I think we can apply that, but it requires uh, very good ground controls and the uh, ground truth collections. Okay, any questions uh, from this uh, presenter? Judge panel, any, any questions? Otherwise, we can move to the last presenter. Uh, I have one question, uh, Mr. Mali. Uh, so, in your recommendation, you have indicated that uh, to define a fire buffer, buffer area for uh, forest firing. Yes, sir. Right. So don't you think that it is too early to determine because we you have not done a temporal analysis. So as we all know, when we are creating a buffer, so certain trees to be removed out. Yes. Sir. Right. So then, uh, have you done any temporal analysis for this uh, research work? Uh, actually, for the moment, no, sir. Huh. But uh, I'm working on the same project and uh, first uh, identification of the four burned area. And the next step of is this project leads to identification of the forest fire brigade for the particular L area and performing network analysis. And time to time, I suppose to develop this research. And thank you, sir. Good. Good. Otherwise, otherwise we we are lacking behind some data yes. for going for our final research. I feel, sir, in our country, there are no much concern yes. regarding this forest fire. So I suppose to do that in future also. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sandamali, for your clarifications. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, let's move to the uh, final presenter. Uh, about the uh, the harbor sedimentation of the Bearwaller area. So, any questions uh, from? Him? Yeah, Papa, sir, uh, that's also very interesting. And what about the volume? I was very disparate of looking at the uh, figures after your bathymetric survey you had carried out in. Uh, 
Any figures, any numbers you have come across? So did you mean the numeric values of volumes? Yes, yep. We, we haven't seen the data. How magnitude the whole issue is. So that, uh, you mean the sand volume of different monsoon? Sand volume, how yeah. much going to be years accumulated after a monsoon goes? Just to get a feel about how magnitude the issue, whole issue is. So I, uh, I show in the presentation, there is a small table. Mm -hmm. uh, the sand volume amounts, the numeric values. Babasara, there should be a variance between this accumulation and uh, accumulation. Yes. Okay. So, how did you tackle that? The the the, the balance uh, that is already deposited over there. So, Babasara, you got me, got my point. Sorry, sir. I can't hear. So, a difference between the volume that is accumulated after a monsoon and then decumulated due to some other reason, then there is still a plus point, I mean, something behind a certain stock of sand, which is not being addressed properly as to how you can have to tackle it. Okay. Okay, your study period uh, goes back to 2017 and 2019. Uh, how did you manage uh, collecting data out of this, apart from your bathymetric survey I'm uh, referring to? Sorry, sir, I can't hear you, sir. I see. I think I, I, I'll leave it to uh, the other panel members. Yeah, let's, let's, let me uh, add at the, your question to uh, Babasar, can you hear me? So, yes, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, okay, can you hear me? So, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, actually the professor also asked, uh, uh, now you, you have collected uh, several data sets starting from 2012. 2012, yes. February, 2013, uh, September, 2017, uh, August, and 2019, September, uh, again, February. Yeah. Yeah. And trying to capture the sedimentation pattern with monsoons. But, you know, uh, it was not, the, you know, the, when you see the, the time, time scale of these uh, data sets, it was not for the immediate seasons I and mean, that after, it's not every after six month uh, interval you have you know randomly collected these data sets uh how do you you know clarify this because you started to it uh, 2012 13 17 19 and you you try to you know capture the sedimentation pattern of mem monsoons sir uh, in here sir i uh, measured the volume with reference to 2012 I calculated volumes uh, and analysis uh, of the sediments uh, volumes uh, with comparing with comparing February 2012. Mm -hmm. Is there any limitations of the data? That's uh, why you are not you know able to you know uh, get the data for uh, six month interval. So the. Uh, is that, uh, is that know, because the, of the limitation of the data or some other reason, you know? Yes, sir. The, the lack of the uh, hydrographic data. They are okay. not collecting hydrographic data every six months. Like this. Yeah, Professor, do you have any clarification? Uh, no, that's all. That's all. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, you know, uh, there are various, you know, causes for uh, harbor sedimentation, such as, you know, the influx from the river and the ocean currents driven by monsoons. From your observation, what is the most, uh, you know, the prominent one in the bare world? Is that because of the monsoons or any other reason? So uh, I observed uh, one reason: the the small uh, small river is all to the. Uh, Directly fallen to the uh, Merola Fishery Harbor. 
uh, from that scenario, the lot of sediments come from land uh, and deposition inside the harbor. Yeah, anyway, the voice, I think, will be disturbed. Anyway, uh, any, any more questions from the audience or the judge panel? Otherwise, we can wind up the session. Uh, my question goes to Mr. Pavasar. You were study based on the uh, variable pressure which is uh, affected during southeast monsoon rather than uh, northeast monsoon. The sediment uh, deposited in the harbor entrance, which is sampled to of operation. Is there any possibility to mitigate such issues uh, by constructing uh, wake quarters, uh, uh, considering about uh, current patterns and uh, seasonal changes and river flows or other factors? Yes, sir. We can, uh, we can uh, select uh, uh, some artificial harbors and uh, construct uh, some jetties and likewise from that scenario uh, we can uh, we can uh, reduce we can reduce some uh, sediments deposition inside to the harbor premises thank you any more questions uh well, since uh, time is you know reached to the uh, the schedule uh, time so we can wind up the session now there are no any questions so today we had uh, four wonderful uh, presentations uh, thank you very much for all the presenters for sharing your findings with us and uh, the first presenter discussed about the accuracy analysis of the for the total station based on the reflected uh, distance measurement using ANOVA and the uh, second uh, presenter detecting uh, urban expansion trends uh, in Valigam Urban Council using remote sensing and GIS. And the uh, third presenter, severity cl uh, cl classification of the forest fire area by utilizing remote sensing and GIS of the case study in L, Sri Lanka. And the final presentation of the analysis of uh, sediment uh, accumulation and uh, accumulation pattern by means of uh, bathymetric surveys the case study of uh, Beruvala Fishery Harbor. So uh, thank you very much all the presenters uh, for your wonderful presentations. I think we had a very uh, informative and uh, fruitful uh, Q&A session as well. So I hope uh, with these uh, comments and the suggestions, uh, authors, uh, you know, would be able to uh, uh, enhance your results, maybe, you know, the direct your uh, research directions maybe you know the uh, the, uh, the enhance your research work as well the future research activities in the same research project so as a final note uh, i would like to congratulate uh, all the authors for their research findings and uh, wish you all the best uh, for your uh, future activities as well and uh, also i'd like to thank uh, uh, and wish good of uh, best of luck for KDYRC in uh, future activities uh, of uh, this symposium as well. So I'd like to hand over the session to the uh, organizing committee for the session. Thank you very much, you all. Thank you, sir. This technical session was reviewed by the following expert panel. Professor Chandan Jayalat, Professor in Quantity Survey from University of Vocational Technology, Dr. P. J. R. N. I. Pussella, Senior Lecturer, Faculty of Geomatics, Suburban University of Sri Lanka, Dr. Kasun Nandapala, Head of the Department of Construction Technology, University of Vocational Technology. On behalf of the Faculty of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences, I would express my sincere gratitude for the panel of judges. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the technical session on spatial sciences, and it is time to award certificate to the presenters. 
to present the certificate i would like to invite the rector southern campus major general prasad bedri singh psc accompanied by dean of the faculty of both environment and special sciences dr tej lakmal and senior deputy dean faculty of defense and strategic studies command nsc simuna singh usp psc ncps to present the certificate KJ Sandhavali Thank you sir With the conclusion of the proceedings of the technical session of the Spatial Sciences of the 14th Annual International Research Conference of Built Environment and Spatial Sciences, General Sir John Kotelaar, Defence University, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Chair and all the presenters for their valued contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, the proceedings of the session on Spatial Sciences are hereby concluded. The proceedings of the session on Conduit Survey will start at 10:30. Please join with the refreshments which is served at the lobby.